What's up, college football fans? Sonoy Valenta here once again with the Mean Green Show. Today, joined by CJ, we're going to recap SMU's early signing day class. And guys, before we get into all that, you already know the drill. If you're a fan of college football and G5 football, consider hitting that like and subscribe button because that is truly all that we talk about. CJ, thanks for jumping on with me. I know you're home from break with your 12-hour work or 12-hour school slash work days that you're out there in Miami cranking out. Um but anyway, really appreciate your time, and yeah, I just kind of want to get your thoughts here on on SMU's early signing day uh, class and uh, where they sit right now in the in the race for the top spot in the American uh, recruiting rankings. Yeah, well, uh, thank you for having me. Um, I'm glad to be done with the the one L grind as a law student. Well, at least the first semester. Obviously, I have to run right back into that burning building uh, in about a month. Um, but yeah, I uh, I'm very excited about this class. I know that we we did this this time last year, um, and I was very bullish on the class that that Coach Lashley was able to kind of throw together last minute, um, all things considered. But I think that you know having a full year to kind of prep a class um, and a transfer class as well, and I'm really liking where where the Mustangs stand. Um, I believe we were talking about it before that UTSA currently is the top ranked class if you look at the rankings, but they also have five more recruits. Um, But if you look at the average uh, recruit ranking, SMU does rank higher and I believe first in the conference. So that's a a great feather in the cap for coach Lashley in his first full class as a, as a head ball coach. Um, So that's pretty exciting, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, just looking at the the list of guys, there are two names on the defense that really stick out to me. And then, then two names on the offense um, for the high school players that I'm super excited about. So, I mean, just to dive right into it. So on the defense, Alex Kilgore uh, out of Katy, Texas uh, from Paytow High School, and then uh, Damian Wimberly out of Vandergrift High School in Austin. Um, They both were guys that late in the process, um, from what I was reading, it sounded like Baylor was trying to get involved, um, specifically with Kilgore especially. Um, And then Wimberly was another one that, I don't know, five years ago, SMU was pulling that kind of a recruit. Um, He was somebody that kind of late in the process, a lot of, Power fives, it sounded like we're kind of figuring out who he was. But at that point, you know, SMU had, had locked it down and, and thankfully got him to sign yesterday um, on early signing day. Um, so those are two high school players that I'm super excited about. I think that Kilgore, his his build, I think that he's the type of guy he could play right now. He's ready. Um, and he he looks it as well. Like he he wears his pads well and he plays uh, he plays like a college football player now. Um, so that's somebody I'm excited about. Um, Wimberly might need to put on a little bit of weight just, uh, at, at 245. He's somebody that I think you put a little bit of weight on. He SMU fans will be excited to hear the name Devere Levelston. I think that if he can put that sort of size on, you know, that's the sort of player, uh, that I think he could be for SMU. Um, but that being said, if he, you know, can play on the edge a little bit early, that would also be exciting. Um, but he's somebody down the line. I definitely think will progress into, an all conference level player. Um, and then on the offense, two guys in high school that I'm super excited about are Jamarian Carroll, a wide receiver from Wichita Falls, Texas at a Hershey high school. He, um, I don't know if you saw it. He was the one that made uh, a play where he was running a slant route and he caught it at the, mm-hmm. like right on the break and somebody went for an arm tackle and kind of spun him around. And as they were spinning him around, somebody else was going low. And so he basically did like a 360 hurdle over a diving defender and took that 80 something yards for a touchdown. That was probably the best play that I've ever seen at the high school level for somebody that like ended up going to SMU. I I couldn't believe that like a player that athletic and that skilled is only a 0.86 on 24 seven and is coming to SMU. I was so excited. Um, He's going to be, I think the, the diamond in the rough. I think he, when you look at the line of SMU receivers, he's in that mold. He's already six foot one. Um, and he's 180. So, you know, Rasheed Rice was a similar build coming into coming into college. And he was somebody that I said, if he could put on 15 to 20 pounds, it'd be really good. And then he put on like 30 pounds of muscle. I think Carol is the same way where if he can put on a lot of weight, he's ready to play now, but he can be elite later if he, you know, puts in the work that I think he's capable of. Um, so I'm super excited about him. And then tight end Trip Riordan uh, from Wakeland High School in Frisco, Texas is another guy that I think uh, the recruiting services are really sleeping on him. He put up some really impressive statistics uh, throughout the season. He had a couple of games. He had like a four touchdown game with 
you know, 150, 200 yards. He's somebody that his body type, he looks like he's ready to play division one football right now. I think that's one of the biggest differences I've noticed in the last five or six years with SMU football is a lot of guys are ready now. Um, and so that's super exciting. So those I would say would be the four high school guys I would be the most excited about for sure. And do you happen to know how many more scholarships are left for this class? Uh, you know, I know early signing day is kind of the new, you, you know, national signing day. Most schools get the blunt of their, of their uh, commitments, you know, inked on ESD, but obviously there is a second, uh, an official, you know, national signing day coming up in February. Do you have any idea a, how many spots are left that, uh, that SMU is trying to fill and B maybe, what kind of positions or maybe certain names that they're trying to go after uh, with those said spots left? Yeah. So at the high school level, I I'm not entirely sure. I would say it's probably one to two more um, because we had six enter the portal, six guys that uh, generally weren't seeing the field too much, as well as some younger guys that I thought had a lot of potential to develop it here. And they just decided they wanted to use their one-time waiver after a year. Um, I believe it's it's not going to be many. I would say it's probably one to two more. Um, obviously, the positions that I think they would want to focus on, generally speaking, are going to be in the secondary and then on the lines, um, as well as, I mean, I guess the, this entire time, uh, we've been pretty deep at running back. And uh, they added Jalen Knight in from the portal, and it sounds like LJ Johnson is high on SMU. Um, the prognosticators have put in picks for him to go to SMU. The four-star transfer, um, I believe, is also a four-star out of high school, almost a five um, from AM. But I believe for the last year, like everything I've read from the the different people that cover SMU has said that if they're going to take somebody or if they're going to take a running back, they're just going to take one and they haven't taken a running back yet. Um, and I know that there are a couple of guys with offers that have not committed anywhere yet. So I'm not sure necessarily uh, if they're looking running back anymore, but that wouldn't be one I'd be surprised by potentially. Um, so yeah, maybe a running back, maybe either a corner or a defensive lineman still, if there's one out there at this point, like you said, most people sign on ESD. So it's pretty slim pickings um, otherwise, but you know, maybe there's, there's a straggler. Yeah. Obviously we can't talk SMU without talking NIL. So are you, are you kind of surprised? Uh, Cause, because I am, I mean, I'm a money motivated person personally. And if <clears throat> there's a set school, that's kind of setting the, um, your base pay, if you will, at 36,000, I know me, you know, if I was, um, talented enough to warn an offer from a school like that, uh, that that's probably, it's gonna be hard to, to, to beat that out, you know, for, um, I would think for a lot of, uh, you, you know, prospects, but are, are you kind of surprised that it is so neck and neck with, with other schools like a UTSA? I think Memphis is still up there in the AAC and maybe also Tulane. Um, but are, are you kind of surprised that SMU hasn't gapped the other AAC teams a lot more given the NIL efforts and collective and how strong they are at SMU? Hmm. Well, we don't know what the other, schools are offering. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that something that I've heard a couple national guys talk about is some schools don't want to publicly say their numbers because if things fall through or if, you know, the money they have is if they run into a liquidity issue, basically they mm -hmm. don't want it to be, they don't want egg on their face publicly. Now, my understanding is the SMU collectives are very comfortable with where they're at financially. They don't make a deal until they know that that money is available is mm -hmm. my understanding. Now, some of the other schools might be thinking, we just need to get the guys in now and we'll worry about, you know, we'll worry about paying a guy in 2027 in 2027. Like there's no point in freaking out about that yet. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if this is the case, but I would expect there's at least one school. Like I know that Colorado, when they hired Dion, uh, Coach Sanders, they talked about how, you know, somebody asked the athletic director, do we have 5 million a year? And they were like, not yet. We don't, but we will. And so I wouldn't be surprised if there are a lot of schools operating in the margins right now, hoping that, you know, it just keeps working out for them. And if it doesn't, you know, then they'll figure it out. They'll pivot and figure it out because 
you can't tie money to a, a player's uh, continued enrollment at a school. And I think that that could also serve to benefit the collectives by saying, we didn't promise you a four year deal because, you know, we can't promise you more than the one year because you're not guaranteed to stay at the school for more than one year. Um, so we don't know necessarily what the promises are from the different collectives at different schools. Um, it will be interesting to see, you know, over the next few years, are there kind of conversations of, well, you know, this school is saying they'll give you this much, but it doesn't necessarily end up that way. And so that's something mm -hmm. that I do feel really confident and comfortable with SMU that, you know, from every conversation I've been party to and everything I've heard, it sounds like money does not get committed unless they know that it's there for a fact. Um, but I don't know if every school can say that. Yeah. Interesting stuff anyways, but yeah. Well, all right, CJ, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you so much for jumping on with me and um, yeah, we'll see how the rest of this uh, signing period shakes out.